Hey y'all, welcome back. It's the end of May and I have a few things to do in the garden today and while we're up in the garden, we can just look around and see how everything is doing. It's been a really rainy spring here in central Arkansas and everything looks fantastic. And we honestly haven't had to water that much. I think we've only watered twice this season. So I'm super excited. We've got flowers blooming. We've got baby tomatoes on the vine and everything looks great. Come along, let's go see what we can see. So this is where we planted the loofahs. And you can see they're already starting to climb all over this fence. We also have behind me a muscadine. It's a wild muscadine that was here at the beginning of the garden season. And because it was already climbing the trellis, we went ahead and let it stay. So it looks like it's doing really, really good. And Lord willing, we'll have some wild grapes from it this year. In, them, in this bed, because loofahs need pollinators, all of these zinnias are volunteer zinnias. We didn't plant any flower seeds in this garden at all this year, except for maybe a few nasturtium seeds here on the corners. But they are, they're already blooming. They're, they look fantastic. They're beautiful and they should be drawing the pollinators in anytime now. The thing I love about zinnias is that they are so pretty at every stage. The peppers are growing. It seems like they're growing kind of slowly, but they're getting there. We've actually harvested a couple of shishitos, and I don't know what that pepper is right there, but it looks like it might be close. I'll have to look at my diagram and see what we planted there. Just kidding, I don't have a diagram. It's gonna be a surprise. <laughs> The shishito peppers have been very prolific already. We've harvested several of them and cooked with them. I mean, they taste delicious. They're not spicy at all. And just look how many is, are already on this particular plant. And there's more blooms. These things actually started putting off peppers before I ever got them out of their solo cups. This is the first potatoes that we planted and it looks like they're getting close to being ready to harvest. I think, I think there's probably been a turkey right in the middle of them. Thanks for clucking. I think there's been a turkey or a chicken right there in the middle. In this bed, I actually planted some dormant strawberries, but I think I left them in the package too long and they're not even attempting to grow. So I went ahead and just poked some zucchini seeds in just to see what would happen. And they finally started growing and they're looking really, really good. I think there's eight or nine seeds, eight or nine plants in there. So if they actually grow and make zucchini, then we're gonna have a lot of zucchini. I also planted some zinnias in here with it because zucchini is another one of those plants that really needs the pollinator help. Um, without the pollinators, the female flowers will just die or you have to come out and manually move the male pollen to the female flower. 
We do have some weeds in there. I need to pull out some of those. Looks like we have some pokeberry plants coming up. Those things are everywhere. Here's the container potatoes. They look really good. I think they have a little bit longer to go than the in-ground potatoes. Um, I see one flower back there. They did bloom, but it looks like they're maybe still, some of them are still trying to bloom. I think these got healed up a little bit better, so we might have a better yield over here than what we have in the in-ground bed. Here's our little fairy garden. What do we have planted in the big stump at the back? Nasturtiums. And what do nasturtiums do? So they bloom really pretty flowers. What kind of animals especially like nasturtiums? Bees. Hummingbirds. Oh yeah. Because they make kind of a trumpet shaped flower and they're perfect for little hummingbirds to get their beaks in and they love them. So these should be a mix of red, yellow, yeah. like a cream color, and I think orange. Um, um, I think the red flowers are the best to attract hummingbirds because hummingbirds can really see red, red flowers really good. Yes, I would agree with that. Um, then here we have some herbs, herbs. So do you remember what kind of herbs we planted here? Uh, I think it's a uh, holy basil. Holy basil in that one. Uh, so I'm then I bet we planted the cinnamon basil in the one behind it. And it's starting to come up, but it hasn't done very oh. much. So also in there with the gazania, we have some Zinia. um we have some zinnias and Marigolds, I think too. Some oh one? yeah, dahlias. We planted dahlias. some dahlias, but I have no idea what a dahlia actually looks like when it comes up. So I don't know if it's coming up. It also looks like we have some of these little wild sunflowery looking plants coming up between them and I'm just gonna let those grow because they make a pretty I have no idea what they're actually called but they make a really I'm pretty a I, I yellow flower plant. on the other side over here one of them is like Italian dandelions I think yeah Italian dandelion and, and then I, did, did we plant anything in the back one uh, um, um, I think we have some ho the holy basil oh we right put the holy here. basil on that one well well we have four Marshmallow. We planted marshmallow. marshmallow in one of them. Yeah, marshmallow. So that one actually, the one in front actually might be marshmallow. Yeah. And then the one in the back might be the dandelion. That's the I don't remember. So in here last week, we actually planted peanuts. And again, I've never grown peanuts, so I have no idea what they look like. We have little green things coming up. To me, they look more like either mimosa or um, ragweed. Uh, uh, but they might be peanuts. I have no idea what newly germinated peanuts look like. So if you know, drop me a comment down below. I really don't think that's peanuts though. We planted sweet potatoes in this bed. And they seem to be doing okay. A lot of my plants out here this year have these little holes in the leaves but we've had a lot of storms so i don't know if it's bug damage or if it has hailed and i just didn't realize that it had hailed uh, look emma it can't be peanuts over there because look there's more yeah i don't know what it is oh well and we are training the sweet potatoes to grow up this arch they Maybe, seem to be doing yeah. okay. Yeah, um, um, this one is especially doing really good. Yeah, that good. one's doing really good. I can yeah. tell that's definitely new growth. It's it, it climbing. It is. Leave it alone. Yeah. This is the bed where we planted the blackberries. You're supposed to wait until they're dormant to move them. We did not. However, they seem to be doing just and fine. There is a lot of pokeberries. Yes, there's a lot of pokeberries in there. Mama really yeah. needs to get up here and, yeah. and weed all of these garden beds. Yeah. It's supposed to be cooler in the next couple of days, so if it's not raining, I'll get up here and do that. Blackberries are doing so well that this tall one at the end has actually got new growth on it. And it has a couple of blackberries, so I'm really excited to see how well these do next year. I think we will probably wind up having to put some sort of trellis up. Blackberries tend to grow and spread and get really floppy. On this side of the trellis, behind the blackberries, we have some pie pumpkins and some candy roaster squash that we're hoping will climb the trellises 
The pie pumpkins are actually a long kind of pumpkin and they're supposed to be really sweet. We grew pumpkins last year, but we only got, I think, two pumpkins off of it and they had worms in them. So, yeah. so hopefully this year will go better. These are tomatoes and this is actually what I need to work on up here. We put the trellis up, just a straight, straight fence panel down the middle. They're looking really, really good, but I think I waited too long on a lot of them. All I'm gonna do on these, I'm just gonna lift them up and support them. I'm just gonna tie these up with tomato with uh, old t-shirts and as they grow I'll just keep helping them stand up. It honestly doesn't matter. I just prefer to not have all of these things in contact with the ground because then you wind up with this diseased part. So if you get little parts of your tomato that are diseased, just go in and trim them off. You really don't want anything touching the ground if you can help it. But this will help keep it a little healthier. They also like to breathe, and I found this out the hard way last year. If they're too bushy, and there's no way to get airflow through the plant, they don't produce as well as if you selectively prune out some of the branches and give it some air. Some of these, I waited too long to trellis them, and they've actually grown roots where they touch the ground. So we're just gonna have wild bushes growing everywhere. These back here are gonna need trellises of their own. Oh. Yeah, that's one of those. T tomato. Line. Yeah. Yeah, they're loaded with little baby tomatoes. In the bean arch, we have beans. They are really taken off. Anywhere we have what looks like a really healthy volunteer tomato, I've tried to leave it. The initial two are growing super well. They're loaded with little oh. tomatoes. The cucumbers are climbing their trellis. They look great. The initial, the initial tomatoes that I planted, they're growing really well. I've actually decided to just try to weave these kind of through the fence instead of tying them up with anything. So far it's working. And then I think this is the kid's favorite part of the garden. The ground cherries. The ground cherries. These are ground cherries. They come wrapped in their own little packaging. And also you can eat them right off the plant because they're clean right inside their little package. Yeah, just peel them off and they fall off the plant when they're ready to eat, which is super convenient. This is our initial blackberry patch that we started. Believe it or not, we actually tried to kill this thing a couple years in a row. Why? Because it was in the way. We didn't have very much garden space then, and we didn't know how quickly they would spread and how much they would spread. They would love to have but a it has persevered. Yeah. And this year, praise the Lord, it's actually loaded if we can get to them before the birds do. If you like what you see, hit that thumbs up, click the subscribe button. And hit the notification bell so you don't miss anything. Thanks for watching.